After designing and building this 10 inch ported subwoofer enclosure, it's finally time to add some carpet. This time around, I will be using the simple method of subbox carpeting which will have seams on the side when finished. Now there is another method of carpeting that will hide the seams, but this requires the enclosure to be built in a certain way where the side panels are recessed into the box. I may try that on the next build, but the method I'm about to show you is what I have used on all my boxes and it usually turns out pretty darn good. To start, I'll go ahead and vacuum up any loose sawdust on the box. Next I'll use some masking tape to mask off around the port because I'm not sure if the paint will prevent the adhesive from sticking properly or not. Then I'll go ahead and add a couple coats of black spray paint to the inner port walls. This part isn't completely necessary, but sure will make it look a bit better. You could also use a different color if you want it to, might look kinda cool. Once I apply enough coats and let it dry, I'll go ahead and remove the tape. I'll grab my roll of carpet that is specifically made for wrapping speaker enclosures, and typically you will find this in either black or gray, but they also make it in other colors as well. This carpet has two different sides. The inner side is the part that will be glued to the box. This has more of a faded appearance and is rougher to the touch. The outside is a bit darker in color and feels more furry. I'll roll the carpet out over the table and place the sub box in the middle and fold the carpet all the way around the box until it overlaps with itself. Seeing that there is more than enough carpet for the sides, I'll go ahead and cut the roll off with a pair of scissors making sure that there is enough overlap. Better to cut a little extra than not have enough. I'll go ahead and fold the carpet back and position the bottom of the box at the very end of the carpet in the middle so it's hanging off slightly. I'm specifically doing this so the seam will be hidden on the bottom where you won't see it. For the glue, I'll be using 3M Super 77 Multi-Purpose Spray Adhesive and this stuff works amazing. One can should be more than enough to cover this particular box. Shake it up and spray a liberal amount on the back of the box and on the part of the carpet that it will attach to. It's a good idea to use a lot of adhesive, but try not to spray way too much in one area on the carpet because it can bleed through. Let it dry for a minute or two until it's nice and sticky but no longer wet. Roll the box onto the glue so it sticks together, and then roll it over once more and press the carpet on the box firmly with your hand. Make sure there are no wrinkles, then roll it back over. Do the same thing with the top of the box and when you roll it onto the glue, make sure the carpet wraps tightly around the edge so there's no slack. Next I'll basically do the same thing with the front, but I'll try to avoid getting glue in the freshly painted port as much as possible. Again I'll pull the carpet tight around the edge when sticking it together and smooth out any wrinkles with my hand. Next I'll roll the box over so the bottom is facing up and spray a little bit of adhesive on the box only for now. Lay the short side of the carpet down making sure it is tight around the edge and smooth it out over the box. Then in the same way lay the longer portion over the shorter end so that it's overlapping and sticking to the box. Grab a fresh razor blade and cut firmly straight across the bottom along where both parts of the carpet meet. Unfortunately part of the bottom piece didn't cut all the way through so I had to recut it being very careful to make sure things are lining up. Once it's cut all the way through I'll remove the loose bottom piece and then pull both ends back up. I'll then apply plenty of adhesive on the box and on each side of the carpet being careful not to get any on the outer parts. Once tacky, I'll stick it together and the ends should line up perfectly. Then I'll just press it on firmly. Next I'll grab a new razor blade and starting at the edge of the corner, I'll cut the carpet from the inside straight out. I'll do this for all four corners creating five carpet flaps that look like this. Next I'll spray a little bit of adhesive on the box only and fold one of the side flaps tightly over the box and smooth it out. Do the same to the other side and while holding it in place use a new razor blade to firmly cut straight down the center. It's good to use a new razor edge every cut like this because razors dull very fast and the cleaner the cut the better it will look. Then I'll pull back the flaps and remove the loose pieces. I'll apply a lot of adhesive to the box and the two side flaps only. Then stick them to the box so the ends line up like before. 
Next, I'll fold the top flap down and while holding it snug, cut a half oval from corner to corner. Then I'll fold it back and remove the loose pieces. Grab some scrap carpet and place it behind the flap. Then cover the underside with adhesive. This is just to help prevent overspray from getting on the outer side of the carpet. Then I'll press it into place and flip the box over to basically do the same thing. It's just slightly more tricky with the extra flap. Just make sure to cut a large enough half oval to cover the entire missing spot. Next I'll cut little triangles over the terminal cup hole and fold them in. Then I'll spin the box around and do the same thing to the other side, minus cutting out the hole. I did have a small issue when cutting out part of the other side, but I was able to fix it without much trouble and it looks okay for the most part. Next I'll carefully cut out the port with a fresh razor blade. And then I'll cut out triangles into the subwoofer hole, kinda like how you would cut up a pizza. Next I'll carefully apply some adhesive and glue the triangles so they're pointing inwards. Then I'll slice off the excess. You could just cut it the same way I cut the port, but I'm just doing this to get rid of the tiny bit of wiggle room the sub has in this hole. Next I'll install the terminal cup using a drill and appropriate sized wood screws. Then I'll just vacuum off the sawdust. I did accidentally crack a corner with a screw, but it won't affect anything. Lastly, I'll cover the inside of the terminal cup with sealant to prevent any air leaks. And we're all done, this box is looking good. And of course I'll be sure to add all of the supplies used in the description below. And in the next video I will show you how I load this Rockford Fosgate P3 sub into this very box. This is also just one part of my entire subwoofer how to series. So be sure to check out the other videos if you're interested and I will catch you guys later. Peace out.